Right, okay, so this is my second attempt at recording this. I did record this a few minutes ago and got it completely wrong. So I'm hoping that the audio is coming through on this one. Um, we'll make it a little bit shorter than the last one as well. So um, I recorded this originally um, a few minutes ago to talk about um, DJs, the varying types of DJs, and of course what you get for your money. Um, this is purely advisory. This isn't a dig at anybody. This is not getting at any of any type of DJ. This is just giving you, telling you the options and what you've, what's available to you as somebody that's booking a DJ and, and what you should look for when booking a DJ. So what we'll do is we'll go over um, three kind of scenarios as to, as to the types of DJs that you, you're likely to come across and, and give you some points as to, as to which one would suit your needs. Okay, so there are very very expensive DJs there are very 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 cheap DJs and there are guys that are in the middle I I don't know all DJs across the country so I'm not making this assumption based on anybody in particular just my obs observations with over 20 odd years of experience in the business the very cheap DJs um, stem from the current internet era the, the web era the ability to go out and um, download music legally, to um, go and buy, or go and, well, not, not buy, that's the point, go and uh, get illegal copies of software. They'll buy the cheapest equipment they could possibly get their hands on and they'll go out and they will DJ for you. Now, I don't condone illegal software use, I don't condone illegal music use, and not every cheap DJ works like that. There are free and cheap pieces of software available for DJs to work from without having to do anything illegally. However, if you are able to go out and DJ at a wedding or a party or a celebration and have the music that everybody wants and still charge between 60 and 100 pounds then I'm not sure how you're doing it I want to know the secret now when I say you're I'm, I'm talking in a more general sense um, I want to know how you're paying for this music because music isn't cheap even now with the internet age you can pay 50p to a pound for one song Albums can be anything from £2 to £12, £13, even on download. There is obviously the um, buying up of old CD collections from old, old DJs, that's fine. But you're still not going to buy those cheap. You know, um, they still cost money in the first place. And you'll still have to pay a decent amount to buy them. Now... The important things when booking a DJ to look for are things that are going to protect you as the person booking. So what we're talking about is stuff like contracts. Make sure that when you book that your DJ is providing you with a contract. A contract that states when you have to pay, when you're, how much of a deposit you pay and whether that deposit is refundable or not. Make sure that uh, they tell you when they're going to arrive to set up, how long it's going to take them to set up and how much space they need to set up in. Make sure that they've got public liability insurance. You might think, oh, well, you know, if they haven't got it, it's not the end of the world. All it takes is their speaker stand to fall over on a member of your party. Um, something that's poorly maintained to catch fire. These are extremes. These have never, I've not seen these happen. These are extremes. But if they did happen and the uh, entertainer, the DJ, didn't have public liability insurance, neither you nor the DJ nor the venue would be covered for that scenario. So make sure they've got it. It's worth it. It's not expensive for the DJ, but it does protect everybody. Make sure that the equipment that they supply is all electronically tested or electrically safety tested. It's otherwise known as a PAT test, a portable appliance test. It's not a legal requirement, but it is very sensible to make sure that your stuff is uh, pat tested. Any DJ worth their salt will pat test their equipment. You want peace of mind that if you book a DJ, they're going to turn up on the day that you want them to turn up. They're not going to disappear at the last minute, leaving you in the lunch making you have to run around to try and find somebody else. 
you'd be surprised how often this happens. This happens a lot more than you would think. This is not saying that these GDGs don't have this, but question it. Question how they can afford to go out and work for these, the amount of time that you expect. 7 till 12 is 7, 8, 9, 10, or 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, I can't count. Five hours. If they're coming out to you for £60, £70, £80 for five hours, how are they affording to fuel their car, maintain their equipment, get the public liability insurance, buy their music, and make sure you have a good time within that fee? How is that part? How are they? How are they able to do that? There are DJs out there that do it for a hobby. But they will still have decent equipment. They'll charge an average rate of around between 150 and 180 pounds, somewhere like that. They'll have public liability insurance. They'll have a, a, a PATS test certificate. They'll turn up and they'll do you a great job. These are what a lot of sites refer to as a low-end DJ. They're not a poor DJ. They're a good DJ. But because it's a hobby, they don't necessarily spend all the time and money invested in their equipment and so on. They're not bad. There, there is nothing wrong with these types of DJs. There is absolutely nothing wrong with these types of DJs. I stress that. And if they suit your event and your night, then go ahead, book them, use them. I know a lot of them that do a very good job. So your mid-end DJs, what will they provide you that a low-end DJ won't? Very little, to be honest. There's not much in it between the DJs. It's about the level of service you get with the DJ as much as it is about what the DJ does. For example, um, we've said before with the with the what we call what the website is called the low end DJ. You'll pay 150 to 180 pounds. You'll get your PLA, your PAT, your um, your contracts will, will most likely be in place. With a mid range DJ, you'll get those same items, but you'll get things like you'll get a personalised service from that DJ. You'll get um, a visit from the DJ usually. Uh, a month before making sure that they know exactly what you want from your event what music you want what your if it's a wedding what your first dance is going to be making sure that they've got everything they need to fulfill your needs they'll make sure they have the right lighting the way you want the lighting to be they'll make sure that they have the right sound system to suit the night that you have they will usually have two or three different types of setup to make sure that they can adjust to the room or the venue that you've got so that if you've got a small venue, they can provide a small setup, but they can still provide that high level of service and make you feel like it's a bigger, a bigger venue. If it's a bigger venue, they'll provide you the bigger setup to suit that venue. They usually won't tend to go towards the corporate type of events. They will usually stick to your weddings, um, birthdays, celebrations, those kind of things where there's a, usually between 100 and 200 people. Uh, this is just, this is just my, my observations, as I said before. And then you get your high-end DJ. Now, your high-end DJ can cost you anything up to £1,000 for the same period of time. But what are you getting with those high-end DJs? They take it to the next level. They make sure that every last little thing you need is catered for. They will usually be able to provide stuff like starlit dance floors. They'll be able to provide uh, specific um, light effects. They'll be able to provide the dancing on a cloud type approach where you get the smoke, the, the low lying dry ice across the dance floor. They'll be able to provide uh, a much larger rig. They'll provide uh, corporates type events and they will generally have a much bigger stock of equipment to work from. These guys are usually uh, the guys that do this professionally for a living. They do nothing else. They are purely entertainment companies. The mid-range guys will usually be somebody that's either doing it full-time professionally, but sticking to the smaller end of the market. Or there'll be people that have full-time jobs that do this as, a, as an add-on earner without it being a hobby. Putting some serious thought into it. The lower end DJs will do it as a hobby. They'll do it for a bit of extra cash, but it's a lot less serious. Um, none of my remarks on this video are aimed at being horrible to any particular type of DJ. But make sure that you pick the right DJ for your event. Make sure that the person that you meet, and I say that really, I, I mean that. You've got to meet these people. Meet your DJ. Find out who he is. 
find out who she is, find out what experience they've had, find out what kind of DJing they do. I myself, 20 odd years in clubs, can mix. I can have a personality type, type event on the microphone, laughing and joking with people, the party atmosphere. We can do all that kind of stuff. So if, you, if you're looking for a DJ that, that's gonna do reggae, I'm not the man for you, you know? I'm not gonna be able to do five hours of reggae. But I know that I'm not that person, so I will be honest with you. You know, make sure that that what you want from your event is what your DJ can provide. You know, is if it's a wedding, it's a one-off event. You're not going to get a second run at it. You don't pick a venue because it's cheap. You pick a venue because it's the one that you want. You don't pick food based on the fact that it's cheap food. Excuse the computer. You pick food based on what you want for that event. Make sure everything is right on your day. Now, I'm not here to tell you anything other than advice. I'm not, I'm not here to sell my product. What I will say is take a look on the internet, shop around. I do have a vlog channel, which I am going to promote over on YouTube. Uh, Snippet, it's called. Um, it's just an insight into my days. Day, well, not necessarily days. It tends to be big events, weekends and stuff like that. Go over, subscribe, uh, like... Add your comments below in the video here. Let me know what you think of this particular video. If you've got any comments or any advice for people that wanted to book a DJ, put them in the comments below. We'll reply to them. We might do another video about it. But make sure that people know that, you know, you get what you pay for. Good DJs aren't cheap, and cheap DJs certainly aren't good. Make sure you make the wise decision. I will say that on my website there is some perfect advice unbiased and I mean genuinely unbiased advice on your wedding disco on ch from choosing your music choosing your venue and choosing what type of DJ to go for it's all there have a look perfectlyindividual.co.uk you are there is no obligation to even contact me if you don't I hope you have a wonderful day but please do take my words into consideration and think about who you're booking before you book if you want advice, you don't need to book, just send me a message and I'll give you some advice as well, depending upon what your query is. There might be somebody I know that can help you provide the service that you want for your day. But, you know, it, this isn't about me, this is about making sure you get your, your event right. So, again, this is just genuine. Please just take what I've said with a pinch of salt but take it in the way it's meant as advice, nothing more. If there are any DJs watching this, this isn't aimed at anybody in particular. This isn't aimed at the industry. This is aimed at the customer and what we should be doing for the customer. The customer's experience is key to these events. Let's make sure they get the experience they deserve for the money they pay. That is what it's all about. Check out snippetuk.co.uk for my latest vlog. Subscribe, thumbs up, comments, all that malarkey. That's me done. Another video another time. See you later.